Stuff is the best. I know. <laughs> I just like smelling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just a, like smelling good. Let's just take a bath in Dr. Yeah. Bronner's yeah. today. I know. Well, you Isn't know, it's the only soap I've used for probably close to 10 years. I know. It's a peppermint. Uh, right? Same thing in my toothpaste, teeth, yeah. toothpaste and yeah. everything else. Well, you know, there's the story behind it. Everybody wants to know why I use it. Remember, Dr. Bronner's father was in the Holocaust, and he was in Auschwitz. Yeah. Oh my gosh. When you go at a thousand miles an hour. Right? Yeah, and we're here we sitting, are. and here we are yeah. filming. Whoops, Rich, right? yeah, sorry. talk about <laughs> improvisation. Right. Here we go. Hi, everybody. This is Sandy Scheller, and I'm with the Chula Vista Heritage Museum, South Bay Historical Society, representing Ruth, Remember Us, the Holocaust. And for those of you who need to pick up your magazine, your free magazine of El Sol from Southwestern College, you can get your copy at the Chula Vista Library, but better yet, I would go to Art on 3rd in Chula yeah. Vista. I am with Rich Walker. What a pleasure to Thank be you. here, Rich. Thank you, Sandra. Rich Walker, for those of you who went to the exhibit, is my incredible, fabulous artist who did the two art sculptures where you see the replica of a train track and the rose, and it is called rose above the ash, above the ash yeah. which is just it really sets the tone for the exhibit thanks it's supposed to the ash you know there is supposed to be representation of the bodies mm -hmm. and it, it 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 was a hard transit to try to try to find a way to represent six million people in a form of art it was really kind of complicated so the idea that Trying to find as many pieces mm -hmm. of that, and then the again the ash from from having known a bit about your mom, as bad as things were, she left the world a happy human being. Yes, and that's oof, sorry. Yeah, rose above it. Rose above the ash. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry, Ruthie wasn't here to see it, but she saw it in a different way. Right. With the exhibit being closed, believe it or not, the Imagine. real rose yeah. petals fell, and there's only one sitting on the ledge. That little ledge. Okay, I didn't talk about this with really anybody rich, but when we went into the exhibit to start doing things, Cleaning fixing up, things, right? yep. and having the interviews, you would think that Ruthie had a look on her face, oh, her, the stand-up poster. The, the stand yeah. poster, and you would think that she was just like, where have you been? Oh. And lately, because we're in there two to three times a week, you can almost see a happier Ruthie. I don't get it, but it's something you don't question. They right. always say, never complain and never explain. <laughs> The Probably other easier. piece about like it's stolen time. Stolen time, right? So it's the idea that th those are clocks, representative of the that emptiness era. of a yeah. clock but and the, the representation. Like the, yeah, the body, mm -hmm. like the body was taken, and if you notice the chart, the burn, yes. right? So there was the colorization of it, pretty unique. Like everybody that was, uh, you know, held captive was individual. Yes. Right? But then again, and then the idea that something was forced upon them. The burn, right? So that's that charness, but then the soul, the, the the time, the mechanisms were all mm -hmm. taken out, and that's somebody taking the life. Right? Yeah. So that one was tough too. I gotta tell you, when I give tours of the exhibit, people don't know where to start, and it's so easy because you have case number one, two, three, and you go around. And then when people, I take them outside, and I always start the exhibit with the art pieces. People are speechless before we even get to case one. Good. So I want to thank you for that. And if anybody is interested in purchasing those pieces after our exhibit, they'll be up. Uh, got good news. Our exhibit's been extended by six months. Good, 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 good. good. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. That's a worthy exhibit for anybody who has to come down. Yeah, it's, you know, it's very uh, informative. Again, like we talked a little bit about Dr. Bronner. Sure. You know, finding that connection, right? But then finding out some of the, I think that the, like often enough, we can be very assumptive as to what we think occurred. Yes. Right? But the information that was delivered there, though very personal, you, you know, so we think of it in a mass, right? And that's hard to comprehend for a lot of people. But the idea you personalized it in just a, a single line story well, you, about... And, and remember, there are 
12 people that are included in the Holocaust exhibit and then five people that are still alive. And yesterday was so much fun <laughs> because I got to see Bella, okay. I got to see Ursula, I got to see Solomon, and then I got to see two of the family members because Sprouts gave five gift cards, $100 a piece from Sprouts to each of the Holocaust survivors. I mean, if we aren't Chula Vista, I don't know what else, right. you know. And the other thing I was going to say is that our exhibit is the only exhibit that is a Holocaust Museum exhibit in throughout San Diego County. In fact, I would say from L.A. down. I know, of course, in Los Angeles we have them, but after you get out of Los Angeles, I don't think there's anything else and that was brought to my attention by Stephen Smith from the USC Shoah Foundation. So oh. it doesn't get any better than that. Right. Rich, yeah. <laughs> where are you from? Me, where from are you Massachusetts. Born? Okay. Yeah, just about 45 minutes outside of Boston and 40 minutes from the Cape. Small town. It's popular now based on the Patriots, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, right there. A little rural, rural community called Rentham, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. yeah. well, what brought you to Chula Vista? Uh, I've always wanted to surf. That's what I wanted to do. So I was a kid, and I probably I probably would have left home around 12 years old, 13 years old, and come out to California to learn how to surf. And I didn't make that trip till I was 24. So like like life always does. But I had an opportunity, got left a restaurant, my restaurant, and then just took that time to just say I was going to make the trip. Wasn't sure I was going to stay as long as I have, almost 40 years now. When did you realize you had the artistry ability? Mm, I'm still not sure if I have it. <laughs> oh, come on. You know, that, Give me a break. Look at well, this. Just because I'm busy doesn't mean I think. You know, but it's, it's interesting. Like, right, that, it's a good question. I like the question. I mean, I can delve into it a bit. But No, um, dive, dive, I dive. I used to draw <laughs> and paint as a kid. Just sort of, it's the way that I kind of kicked time. I was athletic and kind of got around and did some stuff. Raised, raised hell as a kid. You know, bikes and fishing and goofing off, but uh, you couldn't make money theoretically as an artist. Gr growing up in the East Coast, it seemed a silly thing to do. Parents said, it, you get a job, you know? And I wanted to be an animator, car comic book, and wow. I wanted to customize cars. That's oh the gosh. two things that I wanted to do, but uh -huh. both parents said, get a job, an East Coast principal, or go get a job, you know? So I did real work, I have had real employment, but then I went through a divorce and uh, separated from my daughter a little bit and really opened my heart, I guess maybe, and it kind of kind of let me know that it was something that I used therapeutically. And then, yeah, I got expressive with it. You know, people I can see, as much as there's not a lot of figurative things here, people tend to be happy when they see the ones that I was oh, happy. No, for sure. They tend to get sad when they see the ones that I was sad. So I'm able without, you know, writing a narrative to, to kind of uh, deliver one. Mm -hmm. pain. So, yeah, so it's a language or, yeah. Like. You know, it's interesting. We don't like COVID, of course. Right. But Chula Vista has made the opportunity with COVID. I'll tell you why. I look at people that are outside getting their hair cut. Right. I look at restaurants that are outside and they're eating and they're socializing and they're bonding. Then I look at the art, just like in Paris where the art gallery, the art is outside. I mean, we have created in a very, very short period of time, a super cultural experience, especially you, because not only is the art always there, but the fact that bands can come here and experiment, try music, the doors are open, there's always a cup of coffee here. The fact is you, are the glue on Third Avenue. You're aware of that. That sounds sticky. Yeah, it sounds sticky, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not aware of that. But, but you. you are the glue. Oh. Because, you know, anybody can just go to a restaurant and eat. But when I come to Third Avenue and you see me walking and I'm with Mark and Steph and I always walk, I know that I'm going to see beautiful color, designs, happiness. And even though I can't sit there and say, oh, this is this, and this is the mountain, and this is that, even if it's just a squiggle, the fact that it has an emotion to it. Right. And 
it makes me happy. When I come here, it's like, it's not, oh, I'm going to Rich. I'm going to Rich. I'm going to Rich. Yes. Or when somebody calls me up, especially like, like Shelly uh, Rudd, when she yeah. came to me and she said, oh, I have two Rich's paintings. You know? <laughs> or I have this. Or Mary, same thing. I have, I have Rich's painting. It's, it's a very, very cool, cool feeling to know that you're not just in here, but you're spreading out. Even when we had a little threat of people wanting to do something to our windows the protest the and the riots. protest i the hate riot. to use yeah. that i hate the to give into a that word which I, you know i'm supportive of any protest sure the rioting peaceful problematic right right when we had a threat on a peaceful protest i know that you are already looking at the plywood as your campuses well if you noticed i didn't board my windows up no. i did i did I did. I set up a, an ability for them not to enter the shop, mm -hmm. you know. But they, if they, you know, like I didn't want to be part of the fear. So you know, I so, but I, and I didn't want the idea that like people are hiding behind it. So if a protest were to occur, and say there wasn't an instigator that was only acting out of their immaturity, but if somebody were to like, we're not being heard, let's break something. If those kind of storylines, because there's a lot to talk about in the world. You know, mm -hmm. everything you do with the Holocaust stuff thing, everything that we can see, we can see a thousand reasons to talk about stuff, but let's just talk about it honestly, right? And let's, you know, I might be incorrect about everything I've ever thought, but I'm willing to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't need to smash stuff it at, at that level. So especially during such a challenging period of time, that was a comp, that was that weighted battle as to whether you say, you know, like already challenged by COVID, you know, the idea that it's art and there's no real sort of extended life to it, you know, possibly. So, and then to think that there might be some, just some destruction that would occur to something you put so much passion into. Mm -hmm. It was hard. It was a challenging time for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I don't talk much about it, but when COVID hit, there was somebody who happened to be homeless and they were, you know, they used the library for 20 years. It's what they used to do. Give right. themselves a French bath in the right. Chula Vista Public Library. And the lavender bronzer. He, the lavender bronzer. <laughs> and, and what bronzers? And what happened is that um, he uh, broke one of the cases. He was so angry that he broke one of our cases, and he did some destruction. But the bottom line is that it wasn't violence. It was just that he was trying to prove that this was a place that he went to. And you know, I have no hard feelings about it. It's easy to replace a case. Thank God he didn't do damage. He didn't take. Right? No. He didn't take anything. No, he didn't take anything. But Still, you know, I mean, your that's biggest that's fear. Like, I just said that immaturity, and I, and I, I argue, know, and I know you can say. No, no, but think. the biggest fear that you have is anti-Semitism. Is it going to be anti-Semitic? Well, and, like, yeah, and it wasn't. And it wasn't. And it wasn't. Oh, so, there, so, the, so the, we look at that. He was that, homeless. That, that he broke event, in right? because he wanted to right. clean up, go to the bathroom, read the Wall Street Journal. You know. But that was his immaturity. Yes. And that's what I said. The immaturity, it, it, it broke down. You know, he could have stood somewhere, you know, yes. found a way to say it, found out exactly what he wanted to say and say it, right? Didn't have to do that immature thing, no matter his age or what have you, right? You know, and, and if I saw him, I'm serious, I probably would, you know, take him to Starbucks and get him what he needs and say, don't do that again. I'm sure he learned his lesson. Yeah, but still, like, yeah, like I don't think... It, 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 yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge conversation. And I'm, yeah, as you pointed out, the fact that it wasn't anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. which has to be a hard thing oh, to I sit around, here and I right? say, thank you, thank right, you. Right. Not in my city, please. Right. Not it, in and my city. And it's like anything city. that's going to happen. Let's just have a conversation about it. If I'm angry at you, more than likely, it's just something I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And it isn't the fact that, that I disagree with you. You either or I haven't allowed you to explain it well enough. Yeah. You know, and it just seems to be like, oh. But you know yeah. what's interesting? Because when it comes to art, nobody destroys art. But when like, it comes to an art piece, it has a voice of silence, a feeling, an emotion, correct? Yeah, the most, yeah, some. And people's perception of art is different and I really don't know of anybody who has gone in to destroy art even the Nazis 
They didn't destroy the art, they collected the art. They, they destroyed the people. They, destroy, they destroyed the, the photographs of people. They destroyed per that, personal stuff. That thing. They, they separated the, the human, the, the individual component to the, you know, away from it. They devalued individuals and, and looked to commoditize. It's but a very, this yeah. has a life. Is that something? No, this <laughs> has a life, you know? It has a life. I was going to ask you something. Did you know anything about Adolf Hitler from 1900 to 1925? Uh, he's got a small winky. He was a failed artist. You know, like there's so uh -huh. many. You hit it. What? Yeah. Artist. Yeah. Okay. So. But he was meek. I mean, he was you know fearful. Like there's so many things about him that you know like. But just from 1900 to the time that he was doing his artwork. Isn't that interesting that at least he understood the passion of art? And I read in a book, had Adolf Hitler continued to follow his passion as an artist, would we have even had what we had of World War II, the Holocaust, and all that good stuff? I think about that every single day. It's a, it's a, it's a wild thing. When you think about, like, prior to that, like... Germany, like a lot of people just don't know that Germany, for the longest period of time, was probably the most cultured of all countries in regards to their culinary, to their science, to their art, to their music, to like the, the amphitheaters, just in Germany. And this got nothing to do with Hitler. This is all prior to him. And he changed that and made them all look like brutal savages, right? So again, it was a country, uh, smart, educated, well-educated. So it's a really interesting kind of like the deformity that Hitler had on history. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he poisoned uh, what was a good thing. So did he appreciate art as much as he as Germany already had? And he was raised Austrian I think he appreciated he, himself. He, he was an egotistic. And, right? and so that anybody was Anybody who lives solely, there's a few people that we could point at that probably live like that. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. All right. It, it, but, sorry, if I have done it. something wrong, forgive me behind this shield, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not you. Forgive me, Rich, no, 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 for no, no, I have... No, I'm just saying, like, when we think no, about, no, like, no. Like, like, that, like, again, he... I, I cannot fathom the, the atrocities. Well, I was going to tell you, so the name of the book, it just hit me. It just hit me now. I almost wanted to do an edit, and I'm not going to do it. It's called, instead of the art of war, it's called the war of art. And the opening pages in that talk about what would have happened if Adolf would have continued pursuing the art and not becoming the, quote, lunatic that he became. So there are a lot of things that we can learn from. Even if we don't get the answers rich, yeah. we will question and those questions are what's so important to us. If we, right, I love that. I love the idea, like we, what do I know? I don't know anything really, you know, if you break it down, we're on a marble that's spinning in space mm -hmm. while it's rotating a ball of fire, while the entirety of it is rotating around something else in a limited, limited amount of space. And so to say that I know anything, yeah. like where I'm going, where I came from, you know, we can we can guess, we can use science, and we can use an awful lot of stuff. But science has been proven wrong in the flash, based but on a couple of different things. So yeah, so always ask questions. Yes. Be mad. Be wonder. Wonder it, or well, be accept life as being wonders, right? And to accept the fact that to allow yourself not to people who are so staunch in what they believe, they even talk about any religion. Not, it's this. Well, okay. If it makes you but happy, you have fine. to understand that religion before you can sit here and believe what's going on. Yeah, but like so, like to get that involved in something that may or may not. There's definitely something there is, you know. But you know, I don't, I don't need to label it. Rich, let me give you and an that's idea. Just kind of me. Okay, you did you take art classes? No. You did it all on your own. Yeah, yeah. You followed your passion. Okay. Do you think yeah, I got back to it? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, you got back to it. For me. Do you think that I woke up one day and said, oh, I'm going to go ahead and follow the Holocaust and that's going to be a passion of mine? It was the furthest thing from me, okay? It took an older woman in a wheelchair who went through the Holocaust, three different camps, Dr. Mengele, 
um, getting shaved, the nudity, the starving, right. my, grand, my great grandmother dying, you know, 69 pounds. And I, these are things I talk about in a, holo, in, in a Holocaust lecture, right. not in an art gallery. But the bottom line is this that I had to learn to study and figure out in depth because the last thing I want to do is get out there and only talk about Ruthie's story. Right. I want to be able to understand everybody's story, every single Holocaust survivor that's even alive today. I want to hear all the stories because they're all unique. One thing in common that they separate from 1939, 1938 until 1945. I even think that they suffered when they got out of the Holocaust. Absolutely. What would have been interesting is to see after the Holocaust, had you been there, let's just say you'd have been there giving an art class, saying, here's a piece of paper, here's some paint, show me your experience. You did that. I think you were reincarnated when you did Rose Above the Ash. I really do. I really do. Thank you. you. I'll tell you what. I created something that I've never seen in your gallery before. Right. And you created something that truly set the tone. When we talked about it, you know. And it, I'm not going to let COVID win. I good. will not let COVID win. I think if we... we to, to, to one, I think with the COVID thing, first of all, I think we're in a grand position to get our lives back. Yes. To step away from the things that that we realize are not that important, right? And to, you to hit the take, nail on the heads. Yeah. Somebody said to me, my my friend Benny from Dr. Bronner said this to me. What COVID did was teach us the things we need, not the things we want. But I don't, so like again, we teach ourselves, we allow ourselves to be taught by the, by the information that presents itself. And then when, we are, when we're allowable to, to either open up and that sort of part of the rose above the ash, uh, but the, when we allow those things to happen, we grow. So we change. So, we, we, so the idea that COVID, which is just sort of an occurrence on the planet, much like the Holocaust, right? However horrific, and we can think of I mean, I'm not really trying to compare it, but the idea that it became part of our daily culture. But then we start thinking about what is really important. You know, what you know, what brings me a bit of joy. You know, and so been fortunate here. You know, I like the comment about the glue. We didn't really think about it, but I know that people walk by here, kids, elders, you know, randoms, dudes who were thinking they're rough. Who like coming in here because it just it changes their view did anybody ever tell you the my one of my wonderful saying that you have different parts and when you put them all together you create a sum of all the parts sure I like that and yeah. that is what you are that final sum that blends it together and I love it thank you I absolutely love it the, the rose above the ash thing we mm -hmm. first started talking about it. Do you remember you came in and I had this like grand, like eight foot by eight foot, Make multiples of yeah. dark, <laughs> deep layers trying to represent six million. And, sure. you know, I, I was thinking of how to do it, either hand rolled marbles. And I was thinking, you know, the volume that was going to take. But then does it really represent anybody? You know, OK, yeah, one slash of color doesn't represent an entire life, mm -hmm. you know, and then the variation to the age groups and so forth. And it wasn't just somebody my age, my, you know, male, da 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 da. It was children, seniors, it was, you know, young teens and like their, their lives were being ripped and ruined. I, so I, I, I really, I, 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 call, I, I put myself into the music. Mm -hmm. I had myself, which I, I, I love painting with music. So yeah. I was into the Auschwitz, you know, the, the, the sound, and uh -huh. I was a, a raw nerve for a long period of time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ouch. It, Ouch. it's really incredible because I had so many people help me. I can just, I cry when I think of all the names of people that helped me. But yet, when I go to the exhibit and I see it. I, I, I almost bless it when I'm there. I'm like, don't fall down, Mr. Rose. I've got one, one little pedal oh, there, funny. you know. I always want to recapture the pedals, and it's sort of that thing, like in life, when I took that branch and I found it, and mm -hmm. I thought of, uh, I was going to resin the ball, uh -huh. right? But instead, I just put a polyurethane on it kind sure. of deal. 
and I kind of wanted it to open, but as you, when you told me that the petals had fallen, it almost become like the idea that regardless of anything, it's going to change, it's going to grow, it's going to adapt. I only wish and, I knew what day it fell, and I'll never know that. You're like, was it the fact that <laughs> it was cold, it was lonely? I, I mean, I got to tell you, I had a couple of things happen in the exhibit where instead of things being straight like this, they twisted. I'm like, well, nobody was in there. Who would do that? Right. One of the things fell down off the case. I'm like, what's that all How, about? Right? It's getting yeah, a wind. Yeah. Right? But yeah. that idea, like, I love the idea that, that the comment you said about your mom, where Ruth's standing there, kind of going, where you been? Yeah. She's like, you know? <laughs> and for you to feel that. And again, <laughs> but that's that kind of thing. Like, we're, we're operating on a marble yes that's spinning in space yeah you know things like that yeah are very likely you know sure so it's been a difficult you know you know you helped satisfy my goal by getting the exhibit up oh. big question here is what is your goal here on third avenue it's two-part question and what can we do to give back to you nice question um you know, I love South Bay. I love Chula Vista. And it's been, a, you know, there's an awful lot of cool things that have been going on down here. The, the nature uh, uh, of what I would like to see on Third Avenue is it's become sort of a version of Memphis or a Nashville sure. or an Austin. It doesn't have to be, you know, protect the weird, those kind of things. It's own, our connection to the border, our unique flavor down here. The, the idea that we were once agriculturally the lemon capital, tomato of the capital world. of the world, aeronautically with Roar Industries, Roar. we were in the highest echelon of technology here in South Bay. And kids went to school with each other and been friends their entire lives and remained in this community. Now I'm new to it to a degree, though I've lived in Southern California between Imperial Beach and OB for mm -hmm. years. Chula Vista over the last four years has been that kind of thing now I seem to feel like I'm at home so I would like to think that I could take the best vacation I've ever had right there on Third Avenue which is not going to happen today or tomorrow but the idea that everybody who's opening up a shop yes. is opening up something with the intention of it adding a value to somebody who's walking by their day so that would be the answer to that thing so sure. I'd like to see Third Avenue as a as a brand new version of 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 that place to go mm -hmm. you know so we're three hours away from some beautiful stuff. Rosarito, you know, Joshua Oh, gosh, Creek, for sure. You know, the coast, we can go skiing. So there's tons of things we could do. The desert out, you know, out east. So, yeah, got a lot going on. But even keeping it right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. You know, normally people say, you need to change. You need to change. You know what I say? Don't change. Let the change <laughs> come to you. Because this really is a magical space. If Rich. Thanks. Well, thank, you thank you so much. And as we say, <laughs> our lives, our future. Thanks for watching.